Amen. You glad you're in church? All right. Well, I'm glad you're here as well. How many of you guys been enjoying our Fearless Faith series so far? Amen. Anybody been enjoying it? Amen. So I'm glad that we get to conclude that this morning in our fourth and final uh, installment of our series, Fearless Faith. Uh, so if you got your Bibles this morning, uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 5. We're going to be in Luke chapter 5. If you've got your iPhone, your iPad, whatever device you've got uh, with a Bible on it, going to be in Luke chapter 5. We're going to be reading verses 17 through 26. Luke 5, 17 through 26. And this is what it reads in verse 17. It says, one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law were sitting nearby. And it seemed that these men from every village showed up in all of Galilee and Judea as, uh, Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat, and they tried to take him inside to Jesus. But verse 19 says, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took some tiles off, and they lowered the sick man on his mat into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he said to them, why do you question this in your heart? Is it easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. And everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe as they praised God, exclaiming what amazing things they had saw that day. Let's pray this morning. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you that the Spirit of God is in this place, God. That the atmosphere has changed, God. But I pray that this morning, that the atmosphere would be set for a miracle. The atmosphere would be set for a move of God. That you would speak to the hearts of your people this morning. That we would get revelation from your word, revelation from heaven this morning, God. That we would not walk out the doors the same way that we came in them. And Holy Spirit, we give you this time, we give you this space, and we say, have your way in our lives this morning. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Everybody say Amen. amen and amen. Well, I first want to give honor to our pastor, Pastor Huey, for giving me this opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, I, I'm excited. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm expecting God to move this morning. I'm pumped. And so we're going to be looking through Luke 5, 17 through 26 this morning. That is our text. And we've been going through this series, Fearless Faith. Fearless Faith. And as we've been going through this, I've been thinking to myself, why Fearless Faith? Why, why the need for fearless faith? And, and, the, and, and the answer that God dropped in my spirit was because of people. We have fearless faith because of people. Everything that we do is so that people would come to know Jesus, be encouraged, and be strengthened in their faith. Amen. Yes, it, it's an element of encouragement for ourselves, but at the end of the day, it's about people coming to know Jesus. If it's not about that, we've missed it, church. If it's about us showing up on Sunday morning, hearing a good message and not changing the lives of others through the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus, we've missed it. Yeah. We've missed it. It says that these men, they came carrying a man on a paralyzed, they were carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They came, it says they came carrying the man. It says they came carrying the man. They were carrying him before the text says they were carrying him because they had to start somewhere, right? Church, your story starts before it's seen. Okay. Your story starts before it is seen. Where did they come from? Where did you come from this morning? Your story starts before it's seen. We walk by faith and not by sight. I'm believing before I see it. I'm believing before I see it. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 in the message translation says this. It's what we trust in. But don't yet see that keeps us going. It's what I don't see that keeps me going. 
It's what I don't see that keeps me going. My, my kids still may be acting a fool, but it's what I don't yet see that keeps me going. My bank account still may not be what I want it to be, but it's what I don't yet see that keeps me going. I know what God said. I don't see it yet, but it's what I don't see that keeps me going. I like to think of it this way. I call it yet faith. Yet faith. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't come to pass yet. If you know what the word yet means, it means it hasn't happened yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Is there an expectation in your spirit this morning that it's coming, that he's coming, that the presence of God is here? It's in this place, and I may not see it yet, but it's coming. Does anybody in the house this morning have some yet faith? Some yet faith. These men, they knew the presence of God would change their friend. They knew that because it says in the text that the healing power of Jesus was on display. They knew it wasn't them carrying the man that would save the man. It, it wasn't them carrying him. It was the presence of Jesus that would ultimately heal him and change his situation. And so I want to paint this picture for us this morning. Imagine these four men walking up to their paralyzed friend as he lays on his sleeping mat. And said, hey, the, Jesus is, is, is in Capernaum. We, 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 we want to take you to him. What's he going to say? No. Like, you're, like what, what's he going to say? They're just going to pick him up and carry him anyway. So he really didn't have, a, he didn't have a whole lot of options here. So they pick him up and they begin to take him to Jesus. And I, wanna, I, I want you guys to kind of get, get this man's condition in your minds this morning. Being a paralyzed man in this time was a very isolating existence. It was a very isolating existence. Not only would he have to rely on people to get him from place to place, but he had to rely on people to clothe him. In some cases, feed him, to move him, because they, they didn't have the modern technologies and medicines and, and therapy that we have now. He was an isolating existence. He was unable to contribute to society. He was, he was shunned by his community, and therefore he lived a very isolated and lonely existence. He had no influence, no power, no authority. It symbol, this, his, his mat symbolized his brokenness and his separation from society and from God. But watch this. He had to allow someone else to come alongside him and do for him what he couldn't do for himself. He had to allow someone to come alongside him and do for him what he could not do for himself. The first point I want to make this morning is you have to have faith for others. You have to have faith for others. Who's carrying you? Who's carrying you? Who's surrounding you this morning? Who's surrounding you? Who's in your circle, as I like to say? Who, who are those people that are influencing you, that are encouraging you, that, that says, you know what? When you can't walk, I will lift you and carry you if I have to. Who is in your circle? Who's surrounding you? We all want someone to surround us. But watch this. Who are you surrounding? It's not just about people surrounding us and encouraging us, but who are you surrounding? Who are you coming alongside? Whose God dream are you sowing into? Whose God dream are you having the faith to believe for right alongside them? Who are you coming around and surrounding and encouraging this morning? Because your faith isn't just meant for you. Fearless faith is meant to impact everyone around you. It's meant to impact your circle. It's meant to impact your sphere of influence. It's meant to change your job. It's meant to change your family, your workplace, wherever you may be. Who are you surrounding? Would someone want you to carry their mat? Would someone want you to carry their mat? Because I don't want everybody carrying my mat. I don't, I don't want just anybody carrying me. I don't know where you're taking me. 
This man was paralyzed. He didn't have a choice. He didn't have an option. So they carried him. And luckily for his sake, they took him to the presence of Jesus. But some of you need to look at who's surrounding you, who's carrying you, and where they're taking you. Do you when I trust you, you carry my mat. Have you ever carried someone before? Whether that be spiritually, emotionally, even sometimes literally physically carrying them? It's heavy. It's exhausting. It's tiring. It's burdensome. We weren't designed to constantly carry people. We weren't designed to constantly carry people. And, then, and, and this, is, this is difficult sometimes, especially for parents. And I've got a one-year-old, so I can't speak to this entirely. But sometimes you've got to let your kids go. You've got to let your kids experience the presence of Jesus for themselves. They can't be carried their entire life. But it's tiring. They, can't, they couldn't constantly carry this man, but they knew someone who could. They couldn't carry them their entire lives, but they knew someone who could. And so that's where they took him. They took him to the presence of Jesus. I remember when I was in college, uh, I I went to a small Bible college in L.A. And and I was a cafeteria worker. I worked in our cafe. And I I had a 6 a.m. shift. A 6 a.m. work shift in college is just, it's, it's, it's not what you want. It's, it's not at all what you want. Because in college, I didn't, I didn't sleep a whole lot, mainly because I chose to stay up. Um, and so I got very little sleep. I woke up at 6 a.m. and I showed up for my shift ready to work. I showed up ready to work. And I remember showing up and there was a side door that the employees went through. And I, I went to open the door and I pulled the handle and the door does not move. The door is locked. No one had showed up yet. And so I wait a few minutes and, you know, my, my, my boss hasn't hadn't showed up yet. The cook that day hadn't showed up yet. And I was wondering, did, did, I, did I miss the text? Did I not get the email? Did I not get the memo? Did I miss a phone call? Did something happen? And so 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes go by, and I'm like, okay, I'm up now. So let me see if I can get in and, and, and just kind of start this thing myself. So I went around to the other side of the cafeteria and I... I think to myself, I've got to get in. Like, if, if I don't get in, the school does not eat. And so I begin to think to myself, okay, how am I going to get in? And I see, the, I see a broom. I see a broom in a corner. And the way our cafeteria was set up, there was an outdoor patio area. And there was a gate. And there was a door you can go through the gate and you'll be on the outside patio. And then you can get in to the main part of the cafeteria. And so I see this broomstick. And at first I try to open the gate and the gate's locked. So I see this broomstick. I stick the broomstick in between the bars of the gate. I wedge it between the door handle and I pull on it and get some leverage and I push up and I open the door. I broke into the cafeteria patio to get to work for my 6 a.m. shift as a college student because I said, A, if I, if I don't get in, nobody's going to eat. And if I don't get in, I'm not going to get paid because I don't have any money because you're a college student, you're broke, and ramen noodles are expensive. And so, and if I don't get in and they don't eat, that means I don't eat. And if there's anything you know about me, you know I like to what? Eat. And so, therefore, I broke into cafeteria, and now I'm on the outside patio. Outside patio, we had these big, big sliding windows. And there was also a door you went in, pulled the handle, just as before, nothing happened. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this sliding window. So I grab the handle, pull it, lo and behold, guess what happens? It opens. The sliding window opens, I'm able to get into the cafeteria, and I'm able to start the meal, and everybody ate, and I ate, and my boss was happy, happy for me and with me, and everybody ate, and it worked out. I was determined to get in. I was determined to get in. In. Now back to our story in Luke. You've got these four men, and they're carrying their friend. I hope it didn't weigh that much, because carrying somebody can be heavy. And so they pick up their friend, and they're walking. Everybody's got a corner. They're walking. I don't know how long it took them to get there, so I'm just kind of pacing. So we'll see how long it takes to get there. Whew, okay, we're here. So they, fi- they finally got there. They finally get there. And I-, I would imagine them turning a corner and just stopping in their tracks. 
Because the text says, even in Mark's account in Mark chapter 2, it said that the house was filled, right? The house was filled. So imagine this. Imagine Jesus showing up to your house. Imagine he's in your living room and everybody shows up. You've got invited guests. You've got some uninvited guests. You've got people you don't know. It's kind of like the scenes you see in a movie where people show up to the party and you don't know who just walked through the door, but you invited so-and-so who invited so-and-so who invited the third cousin who invited this guy that walked through the door. And so you've got people from all corners of the surrounding areas coming in and, and the house is packed. And they show up, they show up and they're like, okay, let me set you down real quick. Let's investigate the situation. How are we getting in? How are we getting in? These men had a determination to get in because they believed on somebody else's behalf. Watch this, church. The idea of faith is much different than the reality of faith. The idea of faith is different than the reality of faith. We give up too easily. We turn around and go home when we don't want to deal with the reality of what it takes to walk out our faith. These men showed up to the house. They showed up to a packed house and they said, we've come this far. I've carried you this entire way. My calf muscles are burning. My arms are tired. I didn't come all this way to stop and to give up and turn around and leave you here and go home. We are getting in to this house. Can you imagine that they get there and they say, there's no way we're stopping now. There's no way we're stopping now. The door, the door was crowded. The door wasn't closed. The door was crowded. It wasn't closed, it was crowded. Sometimes church, just because a door is crowded doesn't mean you're not supposed to get in. The way may seem unconventional, but isn't that the life of faith? I don't see how I'm gonna get in here. I don't see how this is gonna work out, but I know, but I know where I've gotta get to. I know the presence of Jesus will change my situation and circumstance. I know I've got some place to be. I've got some place to be, and you better believe I didn't come all this way to stop now. Some of you need to hear that this morning. You didn't come all this way to stop and give up right now. Don't give up because it's not what you thought it would be. They showed up to the house, and the house was packed. They didn't say, well, I guess it's not God's will that you get healed. Huh? Oh, well, I'm going to go home. But isn't that what we do? Oh, I can't get in. I don't want to go out today. I don't want to come to church this morning. It's raining. The traffic's too bad. I don't know what to wear. So-and-so said this. I don't want to have to deal with them. I'm not coming. Don't give up because it's not what you thought it would be. Because trust me, for these four men who just carried their friend all this way, this is not what they bargained for. This is not what they expected. But they did not give up. They had a determination. They placed a demand on their life. They placed a demand on their faith and said, we are getting in. Some of you need to do that. You need to place a demand on your life, a demand on your faith, and say, I am getting in. I'm getting in. Imagine the scene. They get there, and now they've got a decision to make. I would imagine they set him down, and they're thinking to themselves, what are we going to do? Hey, John, you got any ideas? I don't know, I don't know man. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. And, and there's always that one friend. There's always that one friend who comes up with the crazy ideas, but they're crazy enough that they just might work. I would imagine one of them, where he's, he's on his corner, he's looking down at the paralyzed man, looks at the house, looks at the paralyzed man, looks at the house, looks at the paralyzed man, huh. looks at the roof, looks at the paralyzed man, looks back at the roof, hmm, I got an idea, I've got an idea, it's going to sound crazy, but I think we can get him to the roof. I think we can get him to the roof. Now, in these days, it wasn't a roof as we would think of it. 
but there was usually a staircase that led up to enable you to be able to get to the roof. And so they pick up the friend, excuse me, let me go around you, and there's a crowd, so they gotta kinda go around people, so they're walking around, get up to the staircase, they're carrying him, somebody's probably squatting, you know, doing the thing where you gotta get up the stairs and carry, and carry the thing. If you move, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and somebody like has to catch all of his weight because they got like the bottom part and they have to like push up. And so they get him up the stairs. Now they have to get this man on the roof. And remember, he's paralyzed. It's kind of like carrying that awkward furniture for your friend that you have to help move, that you don't want to help move, but you got to help him anyway. And so they, they get up on like the, the, the level of the staircase and now they got to get him to the roof. So I would imagine they say, okay, let's push him up. Somebody gets up on the roof. Okay, I got him. They got to pull him up and then kind of turn him and to get him on the roof. Now, now he's sitting on the roof. All right. Now we're on the roof. Now what? I don't know. My, my idea was to get him on the roof. I don't know. I don't know how we're going. That was my thought. It's, it's on the three of y'all to figure this next part out. So they got him on the roof. So paralyzed man, imagine him laying on the roof and these four men sitting here. Okay. We're up here now. We're up here. But watch this. What they had to do next, it amazed me. What they had to do next, they had to figure out where Jesus was. Because remember, they're in a house, right? Jesus could be anywhere in this house because they weren't inside yet. And so I would imagine, squat down, you know, they're crawling on the roof. Okay, you hear I, I don't hear nothing yet, okay. All right. Is he over there? Nope, don't hear, don't hear him yet. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And lo, I say unto you, I will be with you always, even to the... Okay, I found him. I found him. I found him. He's right here. Guys, I got him. He's over here. I found him. Watch this. They leaned in until they heard his voice. They leaned in until they heard his voice. That's how we have to show up to church. That's how we have to show up to our devotional life. That's how we have to show up to whatever situation may be in front of us. We lean in until we hear his voice. We lean in until we hear his voice. They leaned in and they heard his voice. And then they had to start digging. Because the roofs in these days, they had, they had the wood beams and they had a, a, like straw. But then there, uh, some roofs said that th this roof had some dried mud. So they had to dig up a little bit. They had to do a little bit of work. And, uh, and imagine Jesus. Imagine Jesus. Imagine this is the house and I'm Jesus for the sake of this illustration. And so he's sitting in there teaching and all of a sudden, you know, he's got some dust. Some light, some light peeks in, kind of how some light is shining on me. Light peeks in through the roof. And he's just looking. And then I'd imagine, roof opens up, light peeks in, four heads just all at the same time, looking down on Jesus. Four heads look down. And, and Jesus, completely undisturbed by this, completely undisturbed, he's probably just sitting there just, oh, hey, what's up? There's a hole in the roof. And, and, I, and I would imagine this, that Jesus wasn't disturbed by this because he kind of did the same thing. Tore divide through what separated us from his presence. He tore a hole through what separated us from his presence. And now there's a hole in the roof. And Jesus is sitting there. And that's not the awkward part. The awkward part is the paralyzed man being dropped down because he's just laying there. And they're lowering him down. They're lowering him down. And they end up lowering him down all the way to Jesus and he's sitting right in front of Jesus. And when I think about this part right here, these four men did something that blew me away. They did for this man what he could not do for himself. It went beyond their convenience. 
It went beyond their capabilities. It went beyond everything that they would deem comfortable. But they did it because they had the faith to believe for someone else to get them to Jesus. We have faith to believe for ourselves, but do you have enough faith to believe for the person sitting next to you? Do you have enough faith to believe for the person in your office? Do you have enough faith to believe for somebody else? Do you have fearless faith for your neighbor? Do you have fearless faith for the person who needs to encounter the life-changing presence of Jesus? Do you have faith enough for that? We love having faith for ourselves. We love believing God for us. But these four men, this is the only story in scripture where somebody else's faith got somebody healed. The only story. Do you have enough faith to believe for somebody else? Do you have fearless faith for someone else? So now they're here. And obviously, if I'm one of the four men, my head is still peeking through the hole. Because I didn't bring you all this way not to watch now. <laughs> and I'm tired too because my legs are cramping. I, don't have to sk I can skip leg day for a little bit because I carried you this whole way. I'm going to watch now. So they're just looking in. <laughs> and then the funny part happens to me. In verse 20 says, they're seeing their faith. Seeing their faith. I'm going to pause right there for one second. It didn't say you heard their faith. It didn't say that they talked about their faith. It said when he saw their faith. James 2.14, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions. Can faith like that save anyone? It said when he saw their faith. It's one thing for you to talk about it. It's one thing for you to tweet about it. But what actions are you putting behind your faith? Some of you say this, I'm just waiting on God. Well, God's waiting on you. It's time to get off your mat. It's time to get out of your chair. What are you willing to do with the word that God gave you? What are you doing with it? It said when he saw their faith because it wasn't just the faith of the paralyzed man because he didn't really have a choice in the matter when he saw their faith when he saw their faith and so the paralyzed man he's lowered down the four friends are looking through the hole and it says when he saw their faith he said young man your sins are forgiven if I'm if I'm one of the four friends I may be feeling some type of way at this point I'm not trying to carry this dude back home I carried him all this way we carried him all this way I had the crazy idea to get this man up on a roof I didn't think I'd have to get him back off the roof or carry him back through the front door. I didn't come all this way for this. But watch this. Jesus and the man both agreed he was paralyzed. But they didn't agree where. Jesus and the man agreed that he was paralyzed. But they did not agree on where he was paralyzed. Everybody else saw paralysis of the body. When Jesus saw paralysis of the spirit. Salvation? That's what we came for? I'm not trying to carry him back home. But that's so typical of our human condition. That's so typical of our natural nature. To look at the outward condition. Salvation? I want to see somebody walk. <laughs> I'm not trying to carry him. But watch this. Sometimes God will bypass the thing you want to give you the thing you need. He will bypass the thing you want to give you what you need. 
He may have wanted to walk, but he needed to walk in his spirit before he walked in his physical. He will bypass the thing that you want to give you what you need. Jesus always works from the inside out. He always works from the inside out. Fearless faith happens from the inside out out you cannot chase a lion unless god works with you on the inside to chase a lion you cannot blaze new trails if god doesn't put something in your spirit i hope y'all didn't come through this series thinking you were going to chase lions and blaze new trails and god not do something on the inside of you i hope you didn't get that twisted because chasing a lion sounds like real good like that sounds sexy, like I'm chasing a lion. Like, that sounds awesome. Like, look at that. I'm chasing that. I'm chasing that. But guess what? That's not happening if God's not working on you from the inside out. You've got to, he works from the inside out. Church, we are a place of new beginnings and hope for the future. And you best believe for this paralyzed man, this was his new beginning. And it had nothing to do with his ability to walk. This was his new beginning. Now imagine this. Paralyzed man. He's still paralyzed. All right? So he's laying there. He's still laying there. He's saved, but he's still laying there. And then these stinking Pharisees always got something to say. <laughs> they always got something to say. But in this case, they weren't really saying anything. They were thinking this. And this, this, this is crazy to me. Verse 22 says this. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Think about this. That's kind of like one of you guys sitting there thinking, did I leave the iron on this morning before I left? And then me responding, yes, you left the iron on. And as as I just continue preaching, like, I'm responding to what you're thinking. Like, that's what happened in this moment. Now, now remember, this paralyzed man, he's still laying there. And they're just having this, this whole dialogue. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Why did you question this in your hearts, Jesus said? If I'm a Pharisee, I'm kind of taken back right now. Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier for me to say? Your sins are forgiven or to rise up and walk. Now, remember, in this day, Jewish Jewish teaching taught that someone's physical condition was was just an example of their spiritual one. That's what these Pharisees had issue with, because remember, he's still laying there. He's still paralyzed. So they're saying, who is Jesus to say your sins are forgiven? He's still broken. He's still broken. But the Pharisees saw brokenness of the physical, but he had already been healed in the spiritual. Is it easy to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. He then turns to the paralyzed man. And he says, get up, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Paralyzed man, still laying there. Still laying there. Pick up your mat and go home. This is different. All right. I'm up now. All right. I'm going to roll my mat up. Whew. And I love what this next verse says. I love what this says. It says, and immediately as everyone watched. What does it say? It says the man jumped up. He jumped up. It didn't say he had to slowly get up. Because remember, he was paralyzed. He, there's no telling how long he, it's, it's been since he walked, if he ever walked. It said he jumped up. If you've ever come back from a leg injury of any kind, you know that's not natural for you just to get off your crutches, break your cast open, and go run. He jumped up, immediately ran out of the house, and he gave praise and glory to God. Because Jesus worked from the inside out. But the real miracle was his salvation, not just his physical healing. You've got to pick up what you've been laying on. 
His mat probably wasn't comfortable, but it was familiar. His mat wasn't comfortable, but it was familiar. He'd been laying on this thing this entire time. They had carried him. That mat was comfortable for him, but he picked it up and he ran out giving praise and giving glory to God. What are you laying on that you should be carrying? What are you laying on that you should be carrying? Some of you walked in here with a paralyzed faith. Some of you walked in with a paralyzed spirit. Some of you walked in with all kinds of different issues. But I'm telling you, you can walk out carrying that thing. You can walk out carrying what you've been laying on. Running out giving praise, giving honor, and giving glory to God. Because when you encounter the presence of Jesus, everything changes. These four men knew that. They knew that it wasn't them carrying him, but it was the presence of Jesus. It was the presence of Jesus. What is your mat? What is your mat? What is your mat? Who are you carrying? And who's carrying you? Do you have enough faith to believe for the person sitting next to you? Do you have enough faith to, 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 to pick up your mat and go? Because some of you, Jesus has already healed. Amen. Some of you, you've been healed of your paralysis, but you've still chosen not to get up. Because your mat has been comfortable for you. Some of you need to embrace the uncomfortableness, but really walk in the favor of God. And you wonder why you and you wonder why things aren't lining up. All he's asking you to do is get up. All you've got to do is get up. Fearless faith. Get up and chase the lion. Get up and blaze new trails. Get up with a persistent faith to say, I'm getting in. The door may be crowded, but it's not closed. Now, some doors are closed and you shouldn't walk through them, but the ones that are open that he's calling you to go in, you better get in. Yeah. And it may not look how you thought it would look. It may seem unconventional, but God is calling you to, to impact people with his presence. Just as these four men did. Just as these four men did. We not only need to carry one another's mat, but we need people who are willing to carry our own. We need each other in this. Fearless faith isn't just for you, but it's for the person sitting next to you. Fearless faith isn't just for you and your cubicle. It's for the cubicle mate next to you. It's not just for you. It's for the kid, that, your son, your daughter that's strayed away from Jesus. What is your mat this morning? What is your mat this morning? Will you stand with me as we close? I want to encourage you this morning that it was the presence of Jesus that changed this man's life but it was also the faith of his four friends that got him to the presence that put him in the position for Jesus to do what he did <laughs> 